Father, we bless you, Holy Father, we worship your majesty. We praise you, Lord. Wonderful is the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Beloved, you are most welcome. You are most welcome to this platform. Hallelujah. We are elect of God that we come together every morning to study the word of God and also pray. Hallelujah. To obtain two main things. The, the knowledge of God and then the power of God. Praise the Lord. And that's what we do every morning here. You are most welcome. And you will never regret come, coming on this platform. And you are not mistaken be on this platform. Hallelujah. God bless you. God richly, richly bless you. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. So we are going to continue what we started yesterday. The five things to do to get yourself prepared. Towards the tribulation. Hallelujah. The five things to do to get yourself prepared towards the tribulation. Praise the living God. And that is what we are going to uh, uh, continue. Praise the living God. Brother uh, James, you are most welcome. You are most welcome. Now, let's pray before we, go, before we proceed. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we give glory and honor unto your holy name for giving us this great opportunity to come before you to study your word. It is a prayer that, Lord my God, will be able to understand your word and then apply them rightly in our lives. And at the end of the day, we'll be able to give good account to you at the day of judgment. We thank you that you have done this. Let every work of the devil done against our meeting be destroyed. For it is written, the Son of God was manifested to destroy the word of God, work of God, work of the devil. May every work of the devil done against us be nullified in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you. We thank you that you have done this in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So just as I said, the topic is the five things to do to get yourself prepared towards the tribulation. Hallelujah. And we have learned that many uh, people believe, or most Christians believe that a tribulation will not come to meet us uh, because we have been taught that the rapture is taking place before the tribulation comes. When the scripture says the opposite, praise the Lord. And that is one scripture here we are going to read. Hallelujah. In the book of Acts, chapter 14, verse uh, 22, it says, Strengthen the, the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith, and saying, We must through many tribulations enter the kingdom of God. We must through many tribulations enter the kingdom of God. Yes, if only you want to enter into the kingdom of God, then you must go through the tribulation. Unless you are going to some place. Hallelujah. So if people are saying that they are, we are not going to go through tribulation, then maybe they have a fine. You have to find out where they are going. That is why they are not going to the tribulation. But for you to enter into the kingdom of God, you must. It's a must. That's what the scripture says. It's a must. You must go through many tribulations before you enter into the kingdom of God. So if people are saying that they are not going through the tribulation, hallelujah, they are not going to go through the tribulation, then they may have some place to go which is not the kingdom of God. So you have to be very careful about that. Hallelujah. Why would, the, the, why would Christians should go through the tribulation? Why should they go through the tribulation? The scripture makes us to understand that the tribulation is a fire of purification. Hallelujah. God will use the, the tribulation as a fire to purify his children before they get into, hallelujah, the kingdom of God. According to the book of Zechariah chapter 13 verse 7 that was it says awake oh sword against my shepherd he's talking about jesus christ jesus has quoted this scripture when he was about to go through the uh, uh, cross he quoted it he said awake and uh, uh awake oh sword against my shepherd against the against the man who is my companion says the lord of hosts strike the serpent and the sheep will be scattered it's about Jesus Christ. So this one is about Jesus Christ being crucified. Praise the Lord. Then I will turn my hand against the little ones. That means the little one will also go through the same tribulation. 
Hallelujah. So if you are a little one following Jesus Christ, then you must understand that you have to go through such kind of tribulation. Praise the Lord. And he said, uh, the little ones, and it shall come to pass in all the land, that all the land, says the Lord, that to third, in it shall be cut off and died. Praise the Lord. To third of it will cut off and die. Praise the Lord. But one third shall be left, shall be left, left in it. One third shall be left in it. Verse 9 says, I will bring the one third through the fire. Will refine them as silver is refined and test them as gold is tested. Praise the Lord. And they, they will call on my name and I answer. I will answer them. I will say, this is my people, and each one will say, the Lord is my God. Praise the living God. And so this is the plan, divine plan God has put down for his children to call on his name. Now, the Lord is saying, through the tribulation, we will not stop calling his name. Jesus save us. Jesus save us. We'll be praying. We'll be fasting. We'll be going through all the spiritual exercise. And that's where we will call on him and he will respond. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So at his respond, you will come now and pick us into his kingdom to have a rest. That is what the Bible says. When we go there, he will wipe away all our tears. He said he will purify us. You use the tribulation to purify us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And that's the plan of God. That's what scripture says. We must go through many tribulations to enter into the kingdom of God. This is the plan of the Lord. Praise the living God. And the Bible makes us understand the book of Revelation chapter 7 verse 9 or 8, 9 to 10. Hallelujah. Talking about a great multitude of people who went to the tribulation and washed their, uh, their, their garment in the blood of the Lamb. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. Indicating that uh, it's a plan of God to get uncountable number of people during the tribulation to make it into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And this is what the enemy tried to twist it and make it opposite so that people believe the opposite and by that bring condemnation on themselves. And at the same time, when the tribulation falls on, on them, they will, find, they will be offended because they have not prepared for that. Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ said in the book of uh, John chapter 16 that I'm telling you this thing so that when it comes upon you, you will not be offended. Hallelujah. So we get a Christian got to prepare themselves so that when they go through the tribulation, they will not be offended because they know that they, it must come to purify them, to make them pure, to take away the world from them. Hallelujah. The filthiness of the world for them, from them. So the tribulation has been, is orchestration by the Lord. He orchestrated it. Praise the Lord for a good purpose. Hallelujah. For a good purpose. And so Christians got to prepare themselves uh, uh, towards that this tribulation thing that we are talking about. Don't listen to the lying doctrines over there. It's a lie doctrine. Praise the Lord. As I was telling you that even one, one plus one in the Bible, which naked that clearly that uh, the, 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 we have the Old Testament and New Testament, with some for Old, uh, Old Covenant and New Covenant. And Bible makes us understand we can't mingle all of them. We can't combine all of them to live by eight. We have to live by one. Either the Old Testament, you belong to Moses' covenant, and all the New Testament, you belong to uh, uh, Jesus Christ's covenant. And this one, even this one, Christians don't understand. Pastors with uh, PhD degrees and all those reverence, all that don't understand. And they are combining everything. Hallelujah. And we are, we are, <laughs> praise the Lord. Uh, indicating that Jesus Christ has not finished, has not brought the, uh, the law to an end. And for that matter, we should live by that. This one plus one thing. If you could not understand, how can we understand thousand by two thousand? A thousand plus two thousand, we cannot understand. Praise the Lord. So they don't understand what they are talking about. They are saying rapture will take place before the tribulation. That is a lie. And they have even had the boldness to say that they have seen Jesus Christ in Revelation, in the visions, in the in, in their dreams. And Jesus Christ was telling them that the the the, 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 the is coming to pick his people before the tribulation comes. It's a lie. That is not true. For hallelujah. Forget about that line. Because the Bible says you will use tribulation to purify us. We go to the fire. 
to purify us so that we can enter into the kingdom of God. So whoever preacher, whatever preacher preaching that tribulation did not come to meet you, then maybe he's not, he's, where he's taking you to is not the kingdom of God. But if only you are going to the we're going to go to the kingdom of God. You have to go through the persecution and the tribulation. So, Apostle Peter talked about this and the five things that we can do to get ourselves prepared towards the tribulation. First Peter chapter 4, verse 7 downward. He said, But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and and watchful in your prayers hallelujah we learned that this one uh, uh, uh at this point in time that we are getting to the end of all things where the tribulation will fall before jesus christ comes what the enemy will do is to cause you not be serious about the things of god but cause you to be serious about the material things you know many people today they are very busy finding work to do very very busy in their works hallelujah they are very, very busy many people are busy when you go to the cities and towns you see everybody is busy hallelujah seriously looking for money seriously looking for material things they are busy but when it comes to the things of god you don't even have time for it they don't even have time for it. Hallelujah. As you are going to preach, they will tell you I'm busy. As you are going to preach, they will tell you I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm busy. Some of them, they will even sit them down. They are not doing that. They will do anything. But you tell me, say, I'm just, I want to uh, go to some place right now. They are just running away from the truth. They are just running away from the salvation of their souls because they are busily doing things. The devil has kept many people busy for doing things of the, of the world. But how, when it comes to the things of God, they don't, they, don't, they, don't, they don't care. They don't really care about it. Praise the Lord. Even those who call themselves Christians who don't really care about it. About the things of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Busy, busy, busy all the time. So the devil, Bible warns us that we've got to be serious with the things of God. Prayer, Bible studies, uh, the word, everything. Every spiritual exercise, we got to be serious with it and say we have to also be watchful in prayer. Since the enemy is keeping people busy to have to, to amass the uh, worldly things unto themselves, amass wealth on, onto themselves, hallelujah. He also give them prayer topics concerning those things. So most of the prayer topics that we pray has to do with uh, the, our, our uh, things that we need on earth here. Praise the Lord. People are praying fasting to get visas. People are praying fasting to get land. People are praying to, for, for their marriages. People are, they are all good things. They are very good. Hallelujah. But we have the better things to do. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. They have the better things. Remember, Bible tells us that when God created heaven and earth, everything that he created is good on earth here. Everything he created is good. But you know, Bible says there are better things in heaven. And so when God promised Abraham that I'll give the good things to you, whatever you want, I'll give it to you. God, Bible say, even the land that they came from, he promised uh, God, Abraham, if Abraham made his mind that he liked that land, God will give it to him because he's his friend. Everything belonged to God and he wanted to give it to him as a friend. Hallelujah. But Abraham said, I don't want this thing. I want the country in heaven, the better country. Praise the Lord. I don't want this things. I want better country in heaven. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So the Bible said, because of that, God prepared a city in for them, for these people who had that faith, and then they went. So this is a character that the Christians need to uh, adopt. But many Christians, our mind has never, uh, our mind is on this earth here. We don't have the kingdom mindset. We don't have the kingdom mindset. Everything is about the material things, material things, material things. And so we are busy keeping ourselves busy on earth here without, hallelujah, Praise God without thinking about the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And our attitude, it shows that we don't believe in, we don't believe in what we claim to believe. Praise God. We don't believe in what we claim that we believe. Praise the Lord. If you really, really believe that after your life on earth yet, there is a kingdom that you are going, I believe you will, you will put your life on in order. And you, you, live, you live as a kingdom person. Everything about you should be the kingdom. Hallelujah. Every reason about your steps should be the kingdom. Hallelujah. And that is what God, even your work that you are doing, you are doing for the kingdom's sake. 
That is it for the kingdom's sake. And when you have that mentality, you will not find it difficult. When God tells you, tells your, touches your heart, that support my kingdom business, you will not have it because the reason why you are even working is because you want to have inheritance in the kingdom. Praise the Lord. If the pastors of today, they have the kingdom mindset in them, they will not even amass word for themselves and then people are now become offended because many people, I've seen many people on the internet complaining about the pastors. Hallelujah. Because going to their houses is like, like a ministers, like the government ministers. Hallelujah. With cars and with the mansions and with the, with the luxury kind of life they are living. And people have become offended. Many Christians have become offended. People are not going to church because they go to know that when they get the person get their money, they use it for their own uh, selfish gain. Selfish reasons. Hallelujah. But if you have the kingdom mind sight, hallelujah, whatever gift that God will tell somebody to come and support the church with, you will use it for the kingdom of God. You will use it for your kingdom of God. Hallelujah. To, for the furtherance of the kingdom of God. You get a point here. Hallelujah. Praise the living God. That is what God wants us to do. So we have to be serious and also be, uh, 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 be, 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 be very careful in our prayer as the enemy will divert your prayer point. Everything. That what Apostle Paul, that was Peter, sorry, was telling us that we should get ourselves prepared. Hallelujah. Towards the tribulation. One, one step, the first step is be serious. Seriousness. And carefulness in prayer. But that's the first step to get yourself prepared into the tribulation. Hallelujah. And the second step he also uh, mentioned is that, is that, and above all, above all things, have fervent love for one another. For love will cover a multitude of sin. Hallelujah. So Apostle Peter was also telling us one thing, that fervent love will work. Praise the Lord. Fervent love, fervent love, it will cover cover multitudes of sins. That fervent love is about where Jesus Christ told us when we are slapped, we should turn, our, uh, turn the other side, we should pray for our enemies. Hallelujah! Those who hate us, we should, we should love them and we should do good to them. Pray for those who persecute us. Hallelujah! And that's what God, Jesus Christ, wants us to learn before we enter into the tribulation. You cannot not be longer headed with people. You cannot be fighting with people as a Christian and not be having a good terms with them because you have an issue with them and all kind of things. You are not able to forgive and you are entering into the tribulation. You can't stand because the lawlessness will abound at that time. Praise the Lord. Lawlessness will abound. They will do wicked things to you. And God wants you to love such people as well. Want you to love them. Say good things about them. Praise the Lord. Pray for them. Intercede for them. Just as Jesus Christ did on the cross, he wants us to get to that point. That's what Jesus Christ said. And this, is my, this, is my, this is the new commandment I've given to you. Love one another as I have loved you. By that all will know that you are my disciple. So for you to, for, for you to be known or to be, to be marked as a disciple of God, you have, to, you have to exhibit that love character to that extent that when even somebody offends you, Somebody do something evil against you. You bless the person. You pray for the person. Out of the heart. Sincere heart. And it's not easy to do that. There's grace of God. That's why we need to pray for grace of God. To go to, to take that to take that steps in, in, in the Lord. Hallelujah. It is not easy. It takes the Holy Spirit. The fullness of the Holy Spirit. That's what the Bible says. We should pray more. But the more you pray, the more you, you are filled with the Holy Spirit. The more you are filled with the Holy Spirit, the more you are able to stand in the righteousness. Stand in the things of God. Praise the Lord. That is it. Are you getting the point here? That's what the Bible wants us to prepare ourselves towards to the tribulation as we cannot stand. Hallelujah. Because the purpose that the enemy is coming is to fight your love. It's to fight your love. That commandment given to us, that's what is going to fight it. That indeed, are you a disciple of God, Christ? Are you a disciple of Christ? Indeed, that's what is going to fight. Praise the Lord. That is why the Bible says, he, the lawlessness were bound at that state, at that time, at that period of time, to the extent that many people's love will grow cold. That's why we got to have that fervent love. Now we have to learn how to forgive. How to, 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 to pray for those who offense us. The offensive people around us. How to pray for them. How to do many, many good things for them. That's how, this is time we need to learn that. 
so that when we enter into this era of lawlessness, we still have our, uh, our love fervently standing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That is what God wants us to prepare ourselves for. So if people, hallelujah, if we are told that we, the tribulation is not come to meet us and we're not prepared for that, hallelujah, and what it comes upon you, soldiers of the Antichrist, those who belong to the side of the Antichrist, begin to maltreat you, begin to say things about you, begin to mock you, begin to fight you, begin to you know, slap you and do all those things. How can you stand? You become offended. Due to the doctrine of, of, of rapture before tribulation, you become offended because you are not prepared for that. Because we were told to, to just be, be ready for rapture. Praise the Lord. But you are not prepared to build yourself against offensive things that the enemy is bringing. Hallelujah. May the Lord have mercy on us. Hallelujah. So the enemy is coming for our love. That commandment given to us by the Lord Jesus Christ. He's coming for it. He's coming to destroy it. He's coming to bring it down. He's coming to call it down. Hallelujah. And that is what we have to now begin to learn how to be, uh, how to forgive. Today, people are finding Christians find it difficult for, to forgive. Even pastors, they are cursing some people because they, are, they have heard that they, somebody has spoken evil about them. So they have to curse them. They have to do all that they could. Some people are arresting people. They are sending them to court because they, they have heard that somebody has spoken about them. What about Jesus Christ himself? That Jesus Christ was told that he was a, 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 a prince of a, a, all, the, all the demons. He was just he he's having the spirit of the, this uh, spirit. Uh, they said, I forgot the name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And he was saying all kinds of things about him. He was saying he was a liar. He was a deceiver. He was like that. He was like this. And he, would, he didn't utter a word. He focused on what he was doing. He was praying for these people who were insulting him. He was praying for those people who were even killing him on the cross. He interceded for them. He interceded. Pray for them. Lord, forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. But today, do we have that capacity to stand? To stand that temptation? To stand that trial? We, do we have it? Because we have not been trained. Because we have not been prepared for that. But Jesus Christ trained his disciples all his time. Hallelujah. And for that matter, even when Moses, uh, this morning, Stephen was being crucified, uh, was being stoned to kill him. Hallelujah. He was also interceding for them. Bible says he shouted and said, Lord, God, don't shag them with this sin. They don't know what they are doing. This is where we have the point we have to get to. Praise the Lord. So that we can, we can be able to obtain that crown. Praise the Lord. You can be offensively reacting towards the tribulation thing that will happen to you and then go to heaven and God said you have won the battle. That's not obey. So, but that is why the Lord said those who could stand, the lawlessness will abound, but many people love will grow cold, but those who could stand to the end shall be saved. When you stand and you are still fervently in love, loving those who are even killing you, slaughtering you, you slapping you, mocking you, that's where God said you will now pass the exams. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. May the Lord give that grace to us. May the Lord give the grace to us in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the living God. So this is what the Lord is telling us. The scripture is telling us to do. Praise the Lord. It says, love will cover multitudes of sins. So when you have love, it covers multitudes of sins. People offend you and you don't count it as an offense. Hallelujah. People will do things uh, and you become like a foolish. Jesus Christ, Bible says Jesus Christ was like a lamb. Whatever they looked, they did to him, when they treat him, he never tread back. He never reiterated in anything that they did to him. Praise the Lord. And he was quiet to the time he was, was crucified. That was, that was what we call it victory over the devil and the world. When we talk about victory, victory, our victory is opposite. When you are when you were slapped and you are not slapping back, that is your victory. When you are insulted and you are not insulting back, that is your victory. When you are, whatever they, they do to you and you, do, you are not replying back, that is your victory. Our victory is opposite that, opposite the victory of the world. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That is it. Our victory as Christians is opposite the victory of the world. Hallelujah. And we have been trained to not always have our right. This is my right. This is my right. And always want your right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And that's not Christian life. 
always want your right. This is my right. I'm, it's my right to do that. Even we 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 fought, we fight about our right in marriage, in our everywhere. Hallelujah! Until we become like Christ, like a lamb, we cannot we cannot win the battle. So that's where we have to get to. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. Mm, 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 mm. And then the third point is said, be hospitable. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. Be hosp hospitable to one another without gambling. That is the third point. Praise the Lord. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another. As good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Hallelujah. Praise the living God. So, let me tell you something. Hospitability, hallelujah, will play a great role in the time of tribulation. Hospitability will play a great, great role towards your salvation in the time of tribulation. It's very important. Let's learn something from here. Now, when Jesus Christ was chosen the disciples, in the early days, the way he chose disciples is very interesting. You could remember that Jesus Christ told the disciples that if you don't forsake everything and follow me, you cannot be my disciple. Praise the Lord. That's one point. And forsaking everything here was not just uh, theory, but was we're talking about literal forsaking everything. Literally forsaking everything. Hallelujah. That is why one of the disciples, his father died. And he said, I'm going to bury my father and come to continue. And said, no, go and preach the gospel. Let the dead bury the, their dead. Praise the Lord. Another one said, Lord, I want to follow you. But I want to go and say bye-bye to my people. My, my household people, and come back. The Lord said, no. If you do that, you are disqualified. You cannot be my disciple. So literally, when the Lord calls you, follow me. Yes, he called Peter, John, and other people. When he tells you, follow me, that is the, that the last day you will see your people in the home. You got to follow him and never take a step back. Either to your work, to your family, to anything that profits you. You have to leave it. Praise the Lord. Now how the Lord chose his, chose his disciples and he made them to know that that how you can be my disciple. Without that. So in the book of Matthew chapter 10, it gives the same account there. Let's see such account there. Matthew chapter 10 verse 30, 37 to 42. It says, He who loves father or mother more than me is not wealthy of me. So he told the people who are following him, if you love your mother, you want to go home, you want to do this, you want to do this for my mother, you are not worthy of me. Because he had to take them through to a training for three good and half years, and then send them out to preach about the kingdom. Hallelujah. So from that time, you are in school, you cannot go home, you are in body. With the Lord Jesus Christ, you cannot go back to whatever you are doing to profit you. Hallelujah. Now, he continued to say, And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose and he who loses his life for my sake will find it. So this thing was specifically on the disciples that he chose. Hallelujah. You can use, you can use it in general terms. 
but he was specific, specific on the disciples he chose. That you cannot go to your homes. You cannot look, look, go to your children. You cannot go to your brothers. No. Follow me. And it's a literal thing. He was not talking about theory. That we are now using theory. We say that shall not. And then we are having everything at the, our disposal. It's not like that. It's literal one. So uh, by that, these disciples became very poor. They are not working. They are not doing anything. They are not. They are, all that they are doing is following Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is not, also not working. According to Jesus Christ, one person told him that I want to follow you. He said, I don't even have a place to sleep. Praise the Lord. So they are all working. That's why it got a point that they are hungry. So they have to go to somebody, somebody's bush, uh, farm, and then take some of the corn and then chew it raw because they were hungry. Praise the living God. That's where they went through and was training that he gave to them. So the apostles were thinking about, these people were thinking about how can they eat in the in the morning? How can they? And the Lord just sat them down and told them that, don't think about these things, what you eat, what you put on, what you do. Your father knows that you need them and he will provide. He asked them that the best do not work, but God takes care of them. So how much more? Are you not more uh, uh, listen, valuable than, than them? Your father knows those, so all those scriptures were for the disciples. Praise the Lord. That God, Jesus Christ, told them not to do anything. Praise the Lord. And apart from that, we have also general disciples that were following Jesus Christ and uh, taking the things normal. Praise the Lord. They were not restricted. They're following them. That's also kind of disciple they were. So in the in the discipleship, we have main two main discipleship. One is for those who are given a strict information, uh, uh, instruction not to even get back to their home. And once they have the freedom to also, hallelujah, do their things at the same time, believing in what the Lord Jesus Christ is doing, is saying, and also, you know, forgetting about their sins and everything, they work out. That, that's how the disciples, they work on their, on their soul by forget, for, uh, you know, for, uh, living a righteous life. But those disciples were strictly commanded not to go anywhere and the lord told them if you take a step back you don't deserve to be my disciple hallelujah then after these people has accepted that message the lord told them that uh, 40 verse 40 says he who receive you receives me because you have become my disciple so these are the people he's sending them to go and preach the gospel and whoever received them has received christ Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The people who forgot everything and then forsake everything for the sake of the kingdom and they follow Jesus Christ. After Jesus Christ has trained them, he said, I'm sending you out there. Go and preach. And whoever received you has received me. Whoever received you has received me. And he who received me, received him who sent me. Verse 41. He said, he who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive uh, shall receive a prophet reward hallelujah and he who receive a righteous man in the name of righteous man shall receive a righteous man re reward then it came to the, another point and whoever gives one of these little ones the little ones are the disciples who has now trained and become like a children? They become like a children. If you are not child, how can you follow somebody who does not work and you are not working? And then you so Jesus called them little children. Because Jesus Christ said, Unless you become like a little child, you cannot enter into my kingdom. Praise the Lord. So the moment they accepted every instruction and they began to walk with him just like children, following him, they said, Sleep, he will sleep. Doing that to do that. Uh, as he did to the apostles, he said that he called them little children. And so he said, whoever receives little ones like this, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Little ones, only a cup, or give the uh, only little one a cup of cold water in the name of the disciple. As surely I say to you, he shall by no means lose his reward. So these disciples that have been trained by Christ, they become little children. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ always called them little children. When after even 
he died and came back to life. And then Apostle Peter wanted to go to the sea back, and then he, some of the disciples followed him. When he, he, Jesus Christ came there, he said, Little children, do you get some of their fish? So Jesus called them little children. Why? Because they have forsaken everything they are following as children. Praise the Lord. And say, when you receive these disciples, you are received, you have received me. When you receive this kind of disciples that have that tra have trained to become like me, you have received me. Jesus Christ said, a teacher, a, 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 a student must be like the, the, the teacher. Praise the Lord. So that is how Jesus Christ was saying. Hallelujah. And then there was a point that he also told the disciples when, who were not able to go through that training that there's something you have to do. Praise the Lord. Because after these people has received everything and then has forsaken everything and following the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ gave them the title, gave them the right to inherit the kingdom. So he told them, one the Bible said, he looked at them and said, blessed are you poor. He told his disciples, look at them and say, blessed are you poor. Why? Because they are poor because they were not working. They were not doing anything. And said, he said, blessed are you poor. For yours is the kingdom. So Jesus Christ bestowed on them the kingdom. He gave them the right to receive the kingdom. So they, become the, they became the owners of the kingdom. They became the possessors of the kingdom. Praise the Lord. And that is why he gave them the right to also preach about the kingdom. Hallelujah. Give them the right to preach about the kingdom. Hallelujah. Remember the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. When he gave them the right to preach about the kingdom. And then, hallelujah, uh, 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 they, they, they began to preach about the kingdom. Then he also told the, the other disciples who were not living, they have not forsaken anything. Praise the Lord. But yet they are, they are working on their salvation by... Hallelujah, living a righteous life. And you told them in the book of Luke chapter 16, verse 9, it says, And I say to you, make friends for yourself by unrighteous mammon, that when you fail, they, they may receive you into everlasting home. I said, he who is faithful in what is least is also faithful in much. And he who is unjust in what is less is unjust also in much. Hallelujah. So the Lord Jesus Christ, what he was telling us that those who were not able to take that step of faith, hallelujah, to forsake everything and follow him, what they can do to also connect themselves to these people is to make friends with them, with their unrighteous mammon, so that when it fails them, Hallelujah. When they are no more on earth, they can inherit the kingdom together with those who has possessed the kingdom. Praise the Lord. That's why Jesus Christ said, when you receive these people, you will receive him. Hallelujah. That is it. So, remember, Jesus Christ indicated in the book of Matthew 24, verse, uh, verse 7 down 1 to 14, he says, this message of the kingdom will be preached, indicated that the message of kingdom, this is the same message he sent apostles with, will be preached during the tribulation time. Will be preached during the tribulation time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And that means, means Jesus Christ is also going to train people like he did with the apostles and then send them to preach about the kingdom. And such people will also, hallelujah, carry that mandate that when you receive them, you have received Christ. Praise the Lord. When you receive such little ones who obey the instructions of the Lord and then for that matter forsake everything and they are now where all that, that they do is preaching about the kingdom. When you receive such people, you have also received them. So this is what is going to repeat itself during the tribulation. In the days of apostles, that thing happened. And the day, during the tribulations, the Lord Jesus Christ, this thing will repeat itself. So we have, we have we got the remnant who will preach about the kingdom. And such people, when you receive them, hallelujah, you have received me. Hallelujah. So we talk about it in the book of Matthew 25, verse 31. It says, when the Son of Man comes, hallelujah, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his, and he will sit on the throne of his glory. 
all the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats and he will he will sit the sheep on the right hand he will set the sheep on the right hand and bet the goat on the left hand then the king will say to those on the right hand come you bless of my father inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world for i was hungry and you gave me food i was thirsty and you gave me drink i was stranger and you took me in i was naked and you clothed me i was sick and you visited me i i was in prison and you came to me then the righteous will answer him saying lord when did you see me when did you no when did you see you sorry when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink when did we see you a stranger and take you in or naked and clothe you or when did we see you sick and or in prison and come to you but for said and the king will answer and said to them i surely i say to you in as much as you did it to one of the least of these my brethren you get it least of my brethren remember the apostles who follow him forgetting everything one time he told them that you are no more my 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 servant you are my brothers praise the lord so when jesus christ was talking about his brothers he's talking about the people he has trained and become like him in terms of preaching the gospel in terms of living they are exhibiting the power and also everything that jesus christ he called them his brothers and then we have the righteous ones who were not in that state of level of exhibiting jesus christ kind of life but they also called they also live a righteous life so this righteous one will do good to those people who that the lord jesus christ has trained them he called them the least or the little ones praise the lord hallelujah he called them the little ones so we have the righteous people there they are righteous but they don't preach the kingdom hallelujah they don't preach the kingdom and their work to do is to support those who are preaching the kingdom so that at this time hallelujah jesus christ will also reward them hallelujah praise the lord so that he said and then you did to list of this my brethren you did to me remember he told them whoever received you told the disciples that he said whoever received you has received me praise the lord so this scripture is not talking about the armed robbers or all the people who have been studying and uh, uh, doing bad things and they are putting them to prison jesus christ he's not talking about them at all yes when you do those things for them it's also good it's a righteous act but this particular one jesus christ is not talking about such people he's talking about the people that they, they jesus christ will will train them in the tribulation time that they will also go out and preach the gospel hallelujah and we have the righteous remnant ones they are not preaching the gospel they are hiding but what they will do to support is that when they see that, that these tribulation people are going to trouble, they are hungry, they are doing this, they support them, they help them. Hallelujah. Sometimes they will be naked because you preach about the tribulation, uh, preach about the kingdom of God in the time of tribulation. The Antichrist and his soldiers will fight you, will take you to prison. You did and you go and visit them. Though you are you are not being, hallelujah, uh, 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 persecuted because you are not preaching. But the fact that you are doing that righteous act, you are righteous man. Hallelujah. You are connected themselves to what they are doing. 
Hallelujah. Though you are not going out there to do the same thing they are doing, but the moment you are doing that help to them, the moment you are taking them to your home, giving them food, supporting them, they are in a prison, visit them. Hallelujah. God will give chance to, for the righteous people to do those things in the tribulation time so that when they come, when the Lord Jesus comes, these people will also have their reward because not everyone that God will appoint to preach the gospel. Hallelujah. No, it's not like that. So, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, the righteous one who did this in support of what the kingdom preachers were preaching, were doing, such are the people that God will begin to also reward them at the day of tribulation. That you are righteous people. Go and hear the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. What did they do? Because they support the mission work, they support the kingdom preaching, they support the little ones. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. That is what the Lord Jesus Christ has, has made us clear to us. So the as I said, hospitality is will, will play a major role. As Peter said, we must be hospitable. As Christians, we must learn that. We must learn how to give in support of the mostly. The, 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 the kingdom message, kingdom thing, hallelujah. And he said, by doing that, praise the Lord, we will be able to also obtain the kingdom. The Lord said, I will tell them that you blessed ones by my father, come and hear the kingdom. And he said, what did we do? I said, I was hungry. I was this, I was that. We were talking about his disciples that he trained. He called them his brothers, hallelujah. He trained Praise the Lord and call them his friends who are preaching the kingdom because Jesus Christ said the kingdom of God, this message of the kingdom will preach all over the world for, before the end comes. That means though it has not been preaching now, but God will revive that message again. And those who take over upon themselves to preach that kingdom, they will also stand in just like the apostles stand in. Hallelujah. For so stand in the shoes of the apostles and such will be the least among the children of God. Hallelujah. Will be the little ones. Praise the Lord. Why are they little ones? Because they become so full, become like children. Hallelujah. That they have to forsake everything. And then the, what the Lord said to them, did this, they are doing. Do so they call them little children. And said, the Lord Jesus Christ said, before somebody to become a, a great in his kingdom, he must become like a little children. So that one is a, is a matter of greatness. But to inherit the kingdom, hallelujah, that's what Jesus Christ is telling us. So even if you are not able to get to that level, of forsaking everything, hallelujah, and following Jesus Christ and to become poor. Praise the Lord, like he has done to us. This, th this thing he taught us when we came out from the city. We didn't know. We preached this scripture with this different understanding. But we didn't know. He taught us when we came out from the city. He commanded us to come out from the city. I want to teach you something. And as we came there, he told us that the, the way I trained the disciples, the same thing I want to train you. So for the sake of everything, he told every one of us, we have to forsake. Some of them, they have their job, they left for, for others to take care of them. But the Lord said, we should forsake everything. So we are here forsaking everything. All that we do is to preach about the kingdom. So the people are surprised about us. Anytime we go to the city, we preach, they say, what do you work, what work, what work do you do? We say, we don't do any work. What, so is the message of the kingdom you are preaching. They say, so, wow, wow. So how do you survive? They don't understand. At this time, you are not working. And you are saying you are preaching about the kingdom. They don't understand. And some of them are even insulting us. That what we are doing, we, are regret, we will regret. And if we will regret, then the apostles should be regretted at that time. Because that same thing Jesus Christ did to them. Praise the Lord. Apostles should be regretted. And since they didn't regret and they are doing, we have been here, the Lord has taken us, gotten to uh, one and a half years now. Praise the Lord. And we are not, all that we are doing, wake up in the morning, we go and preach the gospel of the kingdom. Praise the Lord. And the Lord trained us for that. Hallelujah. So, being in that state, it just calls you a little child. Why? Because if you are grown up, you will reason. Hallelujah. If you are grown up in the flesh, you will reason. That I have, I have to take care of my children's school fees. I have to take care of this. You have to take that. I have to do this. Peter should be Peter, and other people should be risen because Peter had a wife. We learn from the Bible. Peter had a wife and he has children. Hallelujah! He has to take. He has to reason, but he didn't reason. He behaved like a child, and so he called them like children. And these are children that Jesus Christ said, "When you receive them, you have received me." And these children, some of them will end up in prison because of the preaching of the gospel. Some of them will fall sick because of the beating. Some of them will, will, will fall sick because of uh, uh, good, uh, not good uh, uh, atmosphere for them. They are not in a good atmosphere. 
For instance, when we went to the village, many of us fell sick because the atmosphere there was very so poor. So poor. Hallelujah. And all of almost everybody fell sick. Praise the Lord. It's not an easy thing. Look at me. Being in a village and falling sick. People falling sick. You have to take them to hospital and bring them back. You have to take them to hospital. So it means Jesus Christ was saying that these little children who belong to him, who are strained. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. They, they, these people will end up in all those places. And that ending up in all those places is a test to the righteous people. That the righteous people will take, has to take care of them so that they will be connected to them and then inherit the kingdom. So, uh, what I'm saying, what the scripture is teaching us is that hospitality will play a great role in the time of tribulation. Will play a great role in the time of tribulation. That when you are hospitable, you will gain the kingdom at that time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. The, the, the tribulation, looking at the tribulation, those who go to the tribulation and find it great difficult. Some of the, no, the normal, normal uh, uh, disciples will also go through some, some kind of, but those who are, who go through the, the, the major ones are, the, are those who are preaching the kingdom. And the Lord will reserve those who are not preaching the kingdom as righteous man to also take care of them. And the Lord said, when he comes, Hallelujah. He will reward everyone who took that step that the kingdom belonged to you. Go. Why? Because you connected yourself to these people that ended up in prison because of the kingdom. That ended up sick uh, 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 hospital because they were not having good food to eat. That ended up in many places. Hallelujah. And you took care of them. You, The kingdom belonged to you. Go and enjoy it. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. So when Peter telling us that with the all the, the end of all things are coming, so we should the have fervent love, we should also have faith, we should also be hospitable. He's telling us how to prepare ourselves towards this time so that the reward prepared for the righteous people we can also get ours. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord be with you in Jesus' mighty name. You are praying, asking God, the Lord, help me, praise the Lord, help me to get myself prepared in all this, that when you come, I can also hear from you, faithful servant, blessed one of my father, go and inherit my uh, the kingdom. Why? Because you supported the message of the kingdom. Why? Because you supported those who forsake everything, and they become like children before God. And the, the Lord sent them to preach about the kingdom. And you received them to your homes. You visited them. You, you, you did many things to support the, 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 the move. And for that matter, you have also your share in the kingdom. You have the reward in the kingdom. May the Lord give that grace to us. We are going to pray that the Lord give that grace to us. Let this message enter into our heart and cause us to take a step in accordance with the will of God so that at the end of the day, we'll be able to inherit the kingdom together with the little ones in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Komazianda, brokapa, lekabra yapa, brokshandalaba, lekabra yapa, lokshama de brotaliande, lekabra yapa. Begin to give time to the Lord for this message. Begin to give time to Lord in the name of our Lord Jesus. Rakaba zotaliande, lekabra yapa, rakaba zutadara, lokaba boyandala, rakaba zotaliande, lokshabe bro yapa, lekamanda bro chandiande, lekshabo rakaba lekam. Mande bro da da la ba le kabra ya ba lo shamande bro kapa in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth pray the Lord my God my Savior my Redeemer Lord God of Israel le kabra zutaliande le kabra ya ba le kaman zutaliande le kabra ya ba lo kabra zutaliande in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth pray the Lord my God my Savior my Redeemer Lord le kabra zutaliande le Bro yapa, roca bazo tonda lava, raca manza yande, lika bro yapo, lika manza yande de baba lava, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, pray in Jesus' mighty name. Bible say, uh, uh, when after he finished with the righteous people, he will tell the wicked one. 
that I, I was this, I was like this. It didn't help me. And the Lord, uh, they were asking, why did you? He said, you did not do for my little one, the least of my brothers. The least of my brothers. Hallelujah. Praise the living God. That's wonderful. The least of my brothers. You didn't do for them. Hallelujah. So you have to understand, Jesus Christ is not talking about those who were in prison. Hallelujah. Uh, because of their the, the, because of their crime, whatever, he's not talking about them. Yes, as I said, when you got that so hard to do something for them, it's good. But he was this one is talking about his brothers that he trained and told them that because you have become um, you are no more my uh, uh, my slave, uh, my servant, you are my brothers, you are my friends. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord. He's talking about them. Come Look sharp at bro kappa. You are praying that the Lord will help you to make friends with your unrighteous mammon. Hallelujah. Make friends with your righteous mammon so that you can inherit the kingdom. Praise the Lord. Any any plan of the enemy to put stinginess on you towards the work of God. I know many people are offended at what happened to the churches, what happened in the churches, because uh, many people have become wise. That we are not going to give our money to be because many people come here, come on board like this. They are just soliciting for money. Praise the Lord. They are just soliciting for money. Praise the Lord. And they are not using for the kingdom anything. They are using for themselves. They sometimes they come with the, uh, 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 some threatening informations that I had a vision. I died four days, five days. Somebody been can, can claim thousand years and he has come back to life. And God said this and that and that and that. And they will even add tight to it. That if you don't pay tight, hallelujah, if you don't pay tight, you are going to have straight. And all such informations, all such dreams and visions are false. They are not true. Hallelujah. Whoever is following such kind of people, you be careful. Be warned. They are false because Jesus will never ask you to pay tight. Hallelujah. Why he did not ask the apostles to do so? Praise the Lord. In the days of the church, in the place of the early church, he was they, they were never paying tight. They were not practicing tight. Why? Because tight is a law from the Old Testament. And the law from the Old Testament, the Lord Jesus Christ said, Bible say he has brought to an end. Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to those who believe. And with this scripture, writing black and white in our face, then somebody say he has gone to a hell and he has come and people are in hell because they are not paying tight and we believe it. Praise the Lord. So people, the, the deception has gone on many times. And so people has now, people are getting very smart and they say, pastors are, uh, pastors are uh, fooling us. We are not going to support anything again. Praise God. So when even the truth once comes on board, they find it difficult to get people to support. Yes, they find it difficult. Because the liars has come and spoiled the whole system. And this is the enemy plan of the enemy to cause the righteous to become cold towards this kingdom of God. Hallelujah. So that at the end of the day, they cannot hear that word from God. That because you supported my business, so you come to receive all those things as strategies of that enemy. Hallelujah. The devil has, the devil has sent a lot of pastors, so-called pastors, preachers, evangelists, revelators, and all on the field. And all that they are doing is to get money from the people. Last time I saw a certain woman was so offended that one of the revelators in this city, this city we are in, hallelujah, has deceived them and get a lot of money, built two mansions, eight bedrooms, stolen buildings. And hallelujah. Meanwhile, hallelujah. Meanwhile, you, told, you said that you are going to uh, hell and they are come. And the Lord said, you are, you are not going to take them, uh, let, uh, more time on earth here. So your home is uh, whatever. He, he concocted all those stories. Hallelujah. And the people, and then after that, they will add this thing to it. That if you pay, don't pay tight, you are going to hell. And the people are trooping into them. They will paint our pastors as, as black. And so it is only them that can, you can trust them. That you know that when you pay your tithe to them, you are, it's going to the right place. And then you, people are trooping into them. That is strategy. They are using to get people's money. So that some of the people come to their sense. They saw that these people are now building mansions, buying cars, and now became offended. Praise the Lord. Now the true ones are on the field. We are about 40 people not eating, uh, not, not working. 
Always we go and preach the gospel. But to get some people to support us, it is only takes only God's grace. Do you get it? Because the enemy has spoiled the system already. Praise God. Has spoiled the system already. So, so has made things very difficult. But the Lord is in the control. The Lord is control. Hallelujah. Controlling. Praise the Lord. Yes. We have been here. We have been here about three months now. Praise the Lord. But the Lord is taking control. And people are surprised about how do we eat? How do you people eat? Then ask them. Yesterday they got they meet a certain pastor, and the pastor received them. They received the Lord Jesus Christ once again. Hallelujah. You got to know that no, these people have message. Praise the Lord. Pastors are receiving Jesus Christ. The, 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 the humble ones, they are receiving Jesus Christ once again. As the Lord said, because they got to know that they are not Christians. Praise the Lord. Come, Zuk Tok Dalaba. The humble ones, but the proud ones, they are fighting us. But we don't have problem with that. You get the ones, you got these things. Praise the Lord. So we are going to pray that the Lord will also give us the grace to let Jesus Christ, when he told him, make, uh, said, uh, make a friendship with your righteous mama. That when it fails you, you also inherit the kingdom. And he said, Whoever is faithful in little will be faithful in the big. So don't wait for the big time. Big money come before you support. Hallelujah. And little that you have, you can support with it. And that Jesus Christ will see your faithfulness. And also be, give you a big one. Hallelujah. We are praying that God will help us. Because this is the scripture process the Lord has given to us. We who are not able to leave everything and follow the kingdom business. That's what God has given to us. That we have to also do what? Support with our rich or righteous mammon. So that we can also inherit the kingdom. Hallelujah. Say, Lord my God, I'm praying to you that any kind of stinginess or smartness that enemy has put on me due to the experiences I had, so, but take it away so that I can take a step according to your word so that I may be able to also inherit the kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ, may you open your mouth and pray. In the name of our Lord Jesus, in the name of our Lord Jesus, Christ of Nazareth, pray the Lord, my God, my Savior, my we day my lord kaba zukta pe le kabra yaba rai kaba zukta ndalaba le kaba zukta ndalaba le kaba zukta ndilaba bala Rai kaba zukta be, rai kaba zukta liande, rai kaba zukta ndeleba, rai kaba zukta ba, rai kaba zukta liande, rai kaba zukta ndeleba, rai kaba zukta ndeleba, rai kaba zukta ndeleba, rai kaba zukta ndeleba, le kabra yaba. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Now, yesterday, one of the little ones, they are small boys too. They went to a certain nice house. And that, that, that's the information they brought to me. And when they went there, hallelujah, they met a certain man. Not knowing the man was a pastor, but the man was very calm. And uh, he welcomed them and I sat them down and then began to listen to them. Then uh, after listening to them, he asked them, uh, uh, are you pastors? And they said, no. He says, wow, you this little children, you have a great future. Then he asked them, so where do you come from? He said, we are in Accra, we come from Accra. He said, uh, so how do you how, how do you survive here? How do you eat? He said, well, when we go out and somebody give us a gift, that's all we depend on. And the man said, okay, do you have mobile number that I will, I will send some something on it for you? Hallelujah. And they don't have phone. So they came to tell me <laughs> that this is what the Lord wants to do in their lives. Because the man later on uh, you know, introduced himself and said, I'm a pastor. But what you, you brought is very serious. I believe God has something to me for me because I've been always saying that I don't want to lose heaven. I have been always saying that I don't want to lose heaven. But he didn't know that what was practicing is not is far away from heaven. Praise the Lord. He said, Pastor said, I always said I don't want to lose. The kingdom of God. I don't want to lose it. So whatever I could do to inherit the kingdom, I will do. He said, he told them that this morning, I prayed this prayer this morning, and you have come to me. So I know that God has something for me. 
So my doors are open. Come to me always. always. And the 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 the, 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 the children to, to them told him that we have more things to tell you. He said, Yes, my doors are open. And he asks you, where is your senior pastor? He said, my, your, our senior pastor is with us. He said, wow. So can I see him? Praise the Lord. You see that the man has a genuine heart, but he was lost. Praise the Lord. He was lost. Hallelujah. He was lost. But the proud one will fight. <laughs> proud one will fight. Praise the living God. But those, they, we have the remnants. In the body of Christ, who are also in this uh, 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 apostasy state, and when they got to know the truth, they want it. they don't they don't doubt it. Praise the living God, Hallelujah! Why will you call yourself Christians? Why practicing Roman Catholic custom? Roman Catholic custom. Roman Catholics are not Christians. You know, you have to know for sure. They are idol worshippers. That's why you, they are bowed down to all those images, and they establish Sunday service, and you are you are, you are in line with them. Praise the Lord. They establish Christmas and you are in line with them. They establish Easter celebration. You are in line with them. They have even added Valentine and Christians are in line with them. Praise the Lord. What kind of thing you are doing? Praise the Lord. And the Sabbath, which is called the Sabbath on Sunday, uh, on Saturday, is also established the, uh, by Moses for Ju Judaism. And it's not for Christians. And Christians are in it. So-called Christians are in it. Titan. It's not for Christians. It's for the people of Israel because of the land that they share for the 12, tra uh, 12 tribes. And the one tribe did not get some. The tribe of Levi didn't get some. So they had to, now the other tribes, because the Levi was chosen, that family was chosen to, for, to be a priest. And so the other tribe, 11 tribes, should pay tight one tenth of their properties on their land for the praise alone. For this family, of priest priesthood, do you get it? And the tithe specifically was not money; it was the it was food and all the stuffs on the land, farm things. And so, Bible says, when even when your tithe that we are coming to bring on to uh, to them is many, and you have to you cannot carry them, you have to sell them and make it money. And when you get closer to where you are going to pay that tithe, buy the, those things again. And go and give it so that food will be in my house. It's not money. First place, tithe is not money. Praise the living God. And Christians are saying Abraham paid tithe by faith. That is a lie. There's no scripture that indicates that Abraham paid tithe by faith. Praise the Lord. No, for sure. Abraham, not everything he did at that time is by faith. Sometimes he did them by the commandment of God. Because God said, I, I Abraham obey all my commandments. Praise the Lord. So not everything Abraham did at that time was, was done by faith. Praise the Lord. The when we talk about Abraham's faith, Abraham's faith has to do with the promise of God that he will give him a son. And through that, Jesus Christ was overcome and the whole world will be blessed. And the Bible says, Abraham believed and it was counted to him as righteousness. That is Abraham's faith we are talking about. Not about paying tight. Not about doing that. It's not faith. Abraham did not pay tight by faith. It's, it's a hair saying about pastors. And it has entered into the minds of Christians. So Abraham's faith has to do with believing God. That through him the whole world will be blessed. That's all. And that blessing is Jesus Christ. And Bible say we will also become Abraham's children. When we believe that Christ has become, because Abraham believed that God would do what he has done, and he was counted to him as righteousness. That's how Abraham got his righteousness from. Praise God. Not by Titan or whatever. He got his righteousness from believing God. And the same thing the Bible says, when we also believe that Christ has ended all the law, he counted it to us as righteousness. That's why it is written in the book of uh, uh, Romans chapter 10 verse 4, that Christ is the end of of the law for righteousness to those who believe. So when we also believe, we have also be counted righteousness. Just as Abraham believed Christ, God, and it was counted to him as righteous. That's how we become, Abraham became our father. Not because tight, he paid tight, and we also paying that so we can't become, Abraham is our, our father. That's not. So the contest that based on it, they are deceiving Christians with, is wrong. It's this wrong, wrong contest. Praise the Lord. Come and see and deliver. Look at Bazi and deliver.
In the name of our Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So you see, so deception is all over. And Christians, Christian, Christian, Christianity is in apostasy. No, this for sure is in apostasy. As Jesus Christ said, that it will get a time all of them will sleep. Whether the right, whether the virgin, the, 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 the wise virgins or foolish, but all of them will sleep. And when the Bible is talking about sleeping, uh, spiritual sleeping, it's talking about going away from the faith. The Christians are no more in the faith. But we thank God that Jesus Christ, when Jesus Christ was speaking, he said, in the midst of that time, in the midst of that time, the middle of the night, a voice raised up and said, the black groom is coming. That voice is what you are hearing. I know what I'm talking about. That voice is a voice of preaching of the kingdom. Because by the preaching of the kingdom, that the way of the Lord was prepared. In the first time he was coming on the earth. And the second time he is coming, the, message, the same message must be preached to wake the people up, to get them prepared to meet their king. Hallelujah. In the name of our Lord Jesus. And we didn't know all these things when we were in the city. But the Lord brought us out to the city and said, I will teach you something. I will open your eyes. In fact, when he was bringing us, he said, I'm taking you out of some slavery. I'm taking you out of some slavery. We didn't understand. Not one. We are slaves. We are in prison. We are in exiles. We are in apostasy. That we didn't know. But just as God does his things, Moses was born under slavery. And he came out from the slavery. Hallelujah. And then take, did deliver his people from slavery. Though... The people had problem with him. The first time he went, the people, some of, the, some of them started beating him because the more he preached about their deliverance, the more the problems increased. Hallelujah. The same thing is happening. Hallelujah. Praise the living God. The same thing is happening. Jesus was also born under the, under the law to deliver his people. So we are also born under, under apostasy. And we are trained in it. We grew in it. Praise the Lord. We went Bible school in it. We were taught all the same thing. We are also doing the same thing. I did this thing for 20 years. I've been taking tithe and celebrating Christmas for 20 years. The Lord now has delivered me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then sent us back to the world. And when we tell them, the genuine pastors, they know that this is the truth. This is the truth. Hallelujah. Every person that is sound-minded person, when we tell the person, say, yes, the church is lost. This is the truth. Praise the Lord. So you are not at the wrong place. I'm telling you. You are blessed to be here. I'm telling you. You are blessed to listen to these messages. You are blessed. May the Lord bless you. We are praying that Lord my God. Give us the grace to also do all that we can. To support this ministry. So that we can also hear the kingdom. Just as it is written in the scriptures. May you open your mouth and pray. Kamanda broke up a zoktaliande, lick up a zoktaliande, lick up a to support this move in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Pray the Lord, Mande bro yapa, lick up a zoktape, lick up a yapa, right? Come on, zoktaliande, look shape, broke tandala baba in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Pray the Lord, my God, my Savior, my Redeemer, lick up a zoktaliande, lick up a yapa, right? Come on, ziande, lick up a zoktap. In the name of Jesus Christ. What I'm saying now, if we have enough substance to support this thing, you know, it I will not stand here for two people, four people, five people to listen to me. I have to go to radio stations, I have to go to a TV stations, I have to go to the media, big media stations, pay for them, and then explain things to them that they will know, the world will know that the church is in apostasy, so that the, the remnant. The children of God, the elect ones, will be waking up. The virgins will be waking up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that is why, hallelujah, praise the Lord. That is it. So if you don't have that support, we'll just do it in a little, little way. That's why we need a support everywhere so that we can proceed with these messages. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, the Lord is going to do great works. I'm telling you, the Lord is going to do great works. We are praying that, Lord, my God, today we pray for grace upon our life. This morning, let your mercy be upon me. By your mercy, sustain me in the truth. By your mercy, 
Keep me in the truth. Let me never walk away from the truth. Let me never be drifted away from the truth. Let the truth engrip my heart in the name of Jesus Christ. And by your mercy and compassion, let the Lord deliver me from the works of the enemy. Every principality, every power, every ruler, every spiritual host of wickedness that has been sent against me in order to crush my life and drive me out of the truth. Father, deliver me from it. In Jesus' mighty name, may you open up and pray. Pray for the message of the Lord, the new mercy to come upon your life in the name of Jesus, 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 in the name of Jesus. Father, by your mercy, deliver our soul from going to a lake of fire. By your mercy, make it impossible for us to lose your kingdom. By your mercy, keep me in the truth. In Jesus' mighty name, fill me with the Holy Spirit. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. All of us, oh God, and then move us to do your will. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Let your power prevail. Over the powers of darkness in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. We pray the Lord my God, let your spirit be with us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We are praying for the people out there that all the elect of God may the Lord wake them up through these messages, through this message of the kingdom. May the Lord wake them up. Every argument spirit, any dis- 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 uh, disobedient spirit that's working, the prince of power of air, working in the, in the minds of the people to cause them to disobey the truth. May the Lord condemn it. May the Lord crush their work and release his children from the bondage of the devil, from the bondage of the law, from the bondage of any kind. In Jesus' mighty name, may you open my faith. Pray and ask the Lord, release your exas. Let your exas be released through your servant, through the message, through the kingdom preachers in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus release your people release your people from the bondage of the devil from the powers of darkness in the name of Jesus from the blindness of the eye in the name of spiritual eyes in Jesus might and then we pray hallelujah we give glory and honor unto the Lord we bless the name of the Lord wonderful is the name of the Lord pray hallelujah we give glory to the Lord in Jesus' mighty name, call Mandela, Likapra, Yapa, Lokshabe, Broktan Deliver. We are praying for the kingdom preachers that may the Lord increase our anointing. May the Lord increase our anointing. May the Lord favor us in every aspect. May the glory of the Lord, may the grace of the Lord be upon us. May the Lord give us great grace to preach the gospel, to deliver his children from the powers of darkness. In Jesus' mighty name, may you open your mouth and pray. Father, Lord, we pray to you. Call Masiande, Likapra, Yapa, Likamandeliva, Lokshabe, Brokapa, Likamandeliva. Mandeleva, Father Lord, increase your power on us, O God. Increase your mighty hand on us, O God. Lift up your hands, O God. Help us to preach the gospel with Lord my God, with the manifestation of the Holy Spirit power. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, let your power prevail over the powers of darkness. In the name of Jesus, right kapa, le kapra yapa, le kamandeleva, lo shape, bro chandeleva, le kapra yapa, lo kamazi ande, lo shape, bro tandeleva, re kapa. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. We give glory and honor unto your holy name. How wonderful you are. Gracious Father, we thank you. I commit all your children unto your hands. Let the seed that you have sown into their heart never be taken away by the enemy. Fill them with your glory, fill them with your power, fill them with your anointing. In the name of Jesus Christ, and let them, my God, Father Lord, let them walk in the truth and never depart from the truth. In Jesus' mighty name, I decree this into your life. May the Lord bless you and make you a blessing unto many. In Jesus' name, I decree this. So shall it be. Amen. Brothers and sisters, do the sharing. Invite others to join us. Do all that we could to also push this uh, uh, move forward. And I believe the Lord, as he has said, he will tell you one day that a faithful servant, hallelujah, come and enjoy my, my, my father's kingdom. Because you also supported the message of the kingdom. You also did your quota. You co- contributed your quota to that, 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 that effect. And so you also have your share in the kingdom. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord be with you in Jesus' mighty name. God willing, we shall meet again in the afternoon. Hallelujah. Three o'clock Ghana time. Hallelujah. We meet to pray. And that one is prayer. Hallelujah. Throughout. Hallelujah. Come and join us and you shall be blessed. God bless you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. See you and bye-bye.